Lake Mead is the massive lake that was created when the Hoover Dam was finished in 1936. This vital reservoir has now reached the lowest level it has ever been, and weather forecasts show that it will probably drop a lot lower. If this happens, all electricity generation inside the Hoover Dam's wall will shut down, and thousands of farms will turn back to the dust they were before the dam was built. Here are the details. NBC News reports that water levels in Lake Mead, the largest U.S. reservoir by volume, fell to 36 percent, its lowest level ever on Thursday, June 11th, as the region continues to face the effects of a devastating prolonged drought. Lake Mead was formed when the Hoover Dam was built in the 1930s. It provides water for urban, rural, and tribal lands across the southwest. Officials expect levels to get worse through another dry, hot summer. In normal years, the dam produces enough electricity for 8 million people, but the water shortage will slow energy output. Every foot of lake level decline means about 6 megawatts of lost capacity. The Hoover Dam's energy capacity has already dropped by 25 percent, and levels will continue to decline through this autumn. Las Vegas recently became the first city in the U.S. to ban useless grass around streets, offices, and housing developments in an effort to conserve water. The devastating drought has caused the Colorado River system to decline to half its capacity, and the basin has seen historically low inflows over the last 16 years. The rapid decline has prompted plans for the first ever water shortage declaration from the federal government. The declaration, which will probably be issued in August of this year, would affect distribution to states and Mexico. China wants to construct a mega dam near its border with India. Here is why this is important. China plans to build up to 60 gigawatts of hydropower capacity on the Yarlong Zhangbo River, better known as the Brahmaputra. The hydropower project, which would dwarf the output of the Three Gorges Dam on the Yangtze River, is part of China's 14th five-year plan. Details of the project were first announced in Chinese state media. The mega dam would be constructed in Tibet on the Great Bend in the Brahmaputra, where water can drop up to 2,000 meters in the Yarlong Zhangbo Grand Canyon. The massive facility would lie near the disputed border with India. China has already built the 510 megawatt Zhangmu Dam farther upstream, according to a report by Institute for Defense Studies and Analysis cited by the Times of India. Three more dams at Dagu, Jiacha, and Jishu are currently under construction, and four additional dams are planned nearby. News of the project has stoked fears in India due to its proximity to the line of actual control. The dam could threaten water security in India's northeast and be used as a tool in the border conflict between the two countries. Because it controls Tibet, which is considered the water tower of Asia, China controls the headwaters of 10 of Asia's 11 major rivers. China has not entered into any water-sharing agreements with its neighbors, according to the Times of India. A 2020 study funded by the U.S. government found dams built by China on the Mekong River have driven numerous droughts in downstream countries. China disputes the findings. Citing officials, China's state-run Global Times reports the hydropower station would help maintain water resources and domestic security and could generate income of $3 billion annually for Tibet. The Three Gorges Dam has been Beijing's touted symbol of modernity, scientific progress, and industrial might. But there's a catch. The world's biggest dam might not actually work. Reuters reports that China's Yangtze tributary is seeing record-setting water levels and deadly floods, as experts increasingly question whether the Three Gorges Dam can do the job it was designed for, keeping severe floods at bay. China started building the Three Gorges Dam in 1996, and the structure in Hubei province has been the world's biggest dam since its completion in 2012. Flood control is one of the main justifications for the project, as cyclical floods have been a historic problem in the region. The dam stands at about 594 feet tall and 7,770 feet wide. However, Reuters reports that this is not enough to cope with the river's water levels, which have risen to a 20-year high, citing the University of Alabama's David Shankman. CNN reports that since June, severe flooding has impacted 38.8 million people, including 2.24 million displaced residents and 141 dead or missing. What does China's Ministry of Water Resources have to say about this? At a news conference, Vice Minister Ye Jianchun said the water discharges were made according to a, quote, detailed schedule and that the Three Gorges Dam had been effectively controlling the floods. If you say so, buddy. Mongolia's semi-arid plateau may soon become as barren as parts of the American Southwest due to a vicious cycle of heat waves, which exacerbates soil drying and ultimately produces more heat waves, according to a group of climate scientists. 
Writing in the journal Science, the researchers warned that heat waves and concurrent droughts have increased significantly during the past two decades with troubling implications for the future. Using tree ring data, which offer a glimpse of regional climates from before modern weather logs, the researchers developed heat wave and soil moisture records that suggest recent consecutive years of record high temperatures and droughts have been unprecedented in more than 250 years. According to the study's findings, the record high temperatures in the region are accelerated by soil drying, and together these changes are magnifying the decline of soil water. When soil is wet, evaporation cools air at the surface. However, when soil no longer has any moisture, heat transfers directly to the air. The result is more heat waves, which means more soil water losses, which means more heat waves. The Daniel Johnson Hydroelectric Dam in Canada's Quebec province will soon be one of the dams powering one of the biggest green hydrogen plants in the world. Here are the details. The dream of a world running on a fuel that leaves only water vapor when it's burned is becoming reality. CNBC reports that German industrial conglomerate ThyssenKrupp has won a contract to build a huge hydrogen plant in Varennes and one of Canada's biggest hydroelectric power grids. The biggest problem with hydrogen fuel is that it takes a lot of water and electricity to sustain the electrolysis process that produces the hydrogen, so it makes a lot of sense to use nearby dams to deliver water and sustained green energy for the electrolysis process. The huge new plant will use a whopping 88 megawatts of electrical energy, that's 88 million joules per second, to produce 11,000 tons of hydrogen per year. The company says one of the advantages of being located in Varennes is that the plant can run on 88 megawatts of green hydropower without interruptions. This is ideal, as hydrogen is cheaper to produce when electrolyzers are working around the clock. Another byproduct of the electrolysis process is oxygen, which will be used in a biofuel plant to produce biofuels from residual waste. Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan are starting to hammer out an agreement about a dam that had the entire region worked up. What's so damn important about it? Well, the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, which is just the kind of grandiose name you can really trust, might choke off the water supply for everybody else. Ethiopia is building the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam, or GERD. According to Al Jazeera, Africa's biggest dam is intended to create 12,000 jobs and turn Ethiopia into a regional powerhouse in energy exports. Upon completion, GERD will measure 1,780 meters long and 145 meters high. The dam's primary aim is to generate electricity with its 16 turbines that will have a capacity of 6,000 megawatts or four times Ethiopia's current energy capacity. GERD's reservoir, which Ethiopia has already begun filling, has a capacity of 75 billion cubic meters and the waters are overtopping the incomplete dam. This effectively gives Ethiopia control over 85% of the water that flows into the Nile. The Blue Nile is a major tributary to the Nile, which Sudan and Egypt rely on for fresh water and sediments needed for agriculture. According to Al Jazeera, the two downstream nations have declared GERD poses an existential threat. Perhaps a sign that things have turned a corner, Ethiopia's office of the prime minister announced in a tweet that rising water levels in the reservoir were due to heavy rains and that the nation's leaders are ready to talk about the dam. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.